Hi everybody, Mr. Hayes here. We're back. We're going to start estimating means today, and we're going to start slow, set up confidence intervals, and then we'll just, everything will start to fall together. It will be very similar to what we did back with the proportions. And as always, if you like what you're going to see here in terms of the notes, you can find those down. There's a link down below to my copy of the notes, in addition to other things you may find helpful, including Stats Medic, where I got all these from, and I think that's about it. Um, and as we get closer to the AP course, there's a copy to my three-week AP course there as well, or a review course. So feel free to use whatever you need because it's all free. And while you're down there, throw me a like, maybe a comment, maybe a witty remark or something. Anyway, moving on. So we're going to talk about Oreos. And so I wanted to estimate the average weight of an Oreo cookie. And actually later on, we may do one of our double stuffed Oreos, really double stuffed. Um, but we usually use it after exam. So anyway, so the average weight is less than advertised. I selected a random sample of 30 cookies, found each weight. Here is my weight right here of 11.1921 grams with a standard deviation of 0.0817 grams. Make a 95% confidence interval to estimate the true mean of the weight of an Oreo. So point estimate is my X bar. That's the mean. Again, a lot of stuff we're pulling from earlier in the year. We're just putting it into the context of confidence intervals. Um, here are my four basic name stuff, right? I mean, setup stuff. So we've got population, all Oreos. My sample is my 30 Oreos. It almost looks like 300 selected. My mean is the true mean weight of all Oreos. And then my sample statistic is X bar is 11.1921. So if we continue on, first of all, the first condition that we need is randomness. And so the, um, we need to go through this, and we need it because that will allow us to generalize our conclusion to all Oreos. So since I randomly picked 30 Oreos, and we can assume that the Oreos that are put into the packages are also there randomly, that should fit. The formula for calculating the standard deviation of sample di sampling distribution X bar. Now remember, we're doing this from means not proportions. A lot of times students will come back and they'll start doing the square root of p minus 1 minus p all over n. Perfectly understandable given what we've been doing. But we're shifting gears here and again it's important to realize are we doing proportions or are we doing means. So here it is going to equal the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. Now obviously we've got a couple of hang-ups here but we'll talk about that there in a second. So what condition must be met to use this formula? Has it been met? We have to have our 10% condition. Obviously, 30 is a lot less than one-tenth of all Oreos, so we're good there. So we don't have to worry about doing replacements, so that's my 10% condition. And the last one over here is that um, we're kicking in here for standard error. So in the formula standard deviation, we don't know what this is, and we generally won't if we're trying to estimate what's going on with the population. So we have to use S, of, S sub X again instead so um, standard error of x bar is going to be the standard deviation that we found divided through by the square root of n. So it gives us a standard deviation for the sampling distribution of 0 0.0149. All right. Last sample or last condition, is it appropriate to use normal distributions? The answer is yes. And we're going to talk about a few different conditions for this including one where they just tell you it would be a normal, that the population is normally distributed, which is the case, then we're good there. But 30 is at least as big as 30, so by central limit theorem, we can use a normal distribution for this, okay? So again, it's either considered normal or we have a large enough sample size. And we'll talk about those when we formalize this. Now, when we're finding the margin of error for confidence interval, we usually use, for uh, proportions, we use Z star. We are going to use t as the critical value. Well, what is this t? Well, here's why. Let me use. And what ends up happening here is that this is a t distribution. Now, if you remember when we do a 95% confidence level, remember that's about 1.96. And if I have a, we'll talk about degrees of freedom here in a second. If you remember from before, that's based upon n. As n gets larger, look at what happens to my t scores. It gets closer and closer and closer and closer, all the way down to 1.960. If, it's, if we have an infinite sample size. So what T-score does is it scales it for our sample size. And the reason why we need to do that is because we don't have our standard deviation. And since we don't have our standard deviation, we have to make a bigger allowance for what's going on because we might not have the, the S sub X 
um, that we came up with in our sample may or may not be super accurate compared to what the population standard de deviation is, okay? T-score we find very similar to how we find uh, Z-scores. The only difference is that we're going to use table B instead, and I'll show you how to use it here in a second. And again, notice here, in a normal T distribution, it's going to be a lot flatter. Normal curves go here, and remember what happens when we get standard deviation, is, um, what happens to our curves as N gets larger? They get thinner, but they also get taller. Okay, so as we go, the next one, if, if, as n gets bigger, it'll look like that and get closer and closer and closer. So what is T star needed for this confidence interval? So use table B and degrees of freedom. Okay, so our degrees of freedom is 29. And so the reason why it's 29 is remember that when you're picking objects, the second to last pick picks the last two. So if I have two choices left, if you pick this one, then this one has to go. There's no choice for where that last one goes, and vice versa. If I pick this one, then this one has no place to go. All right? So anyway, for table B, what you're going to do for 95%, as we come back here. So for 95% confidence interval, it is here. Why? Because this right tail probability is going to be 2.5%, or yeah, 2.5%, 2.5% on the other side. So I'm going to sc scroll down until I see 29. And we get down here, and we get to 29 and 2.045, all right? So what you do is you figure out which confidence level you want or what right tail probability you need, and that's gonna be more for tests. And then you're gonna go down to degrees of freedom and go over. Now what happens if you scroll, go past 30, you'll notice that we start skipping around, partly because the numbers, there's less space in between here. You always go ground down on these. So let's say if we had 35 or even 36, 37, 39, we would go down to 30, because we want to make sure our confidence interval is wide enough to capture all the potential values. And we've done that before in statistics, just reminding you of that, okay? So, table B, degrees of freedom is 29, 95% gives us 2.45. And again, remember, we've got 5% out here on the tails, all right? So, let's start piecing this together. Margin of error, just like before, it's going to be a T-score times our standard error. So in this case here, it's 2.045 times 0 0.0149, which was the standard error that we found above. So that gives me 0 0.0305. So then what we're going to end up doing is we're going to do just like what we did before. We're going to add or subtract that from our point estimate. So my point estimate was 11.1921 grams. And so that's going to add... I'm going to add and subtract that, so that moves me out from 11.1616 up to 11.22226. Yeah, yeah. So to interpret this, just like what we did before, we are 95% confident that the interval from 11.1616 to 11.2226 grams, notice I have context here, captures the true mean weight of all Oreos. And again, more context there. So the specific formula for margin of error or excuse me, for confidence intervals, is going to be x bar, which is our point estimate, plus or minus our margin of error. So now the question becomes, and this is one of those things which makes it nice for confidence intervals sometimes, is that does, um, according to Nabisco, each Oreo raised 11.3 grams. Do I have sufficient evidence to provide or to state that the true average weight is less than 11.3 grams? And if I look through this, 11.3 is not in that, in, in that group, okay? So 11.3 is up here. So since both of my numbers, my 95% my confidence range is underneath this, then yeah, I do have. So 11.3 grams is not contained within the interval. All plausible values are less than 11.3 grams. So therefore, convincing evidence. So again, we're gonna go through one more of these and then we're gonna kind of wrap it all up really, really nicely in the third set of videos here at this unit. But hopefully you'll find this helpful. If you hold on, it should load up into the next video where we formalize all this and do a couple of examples. But again, wanna make sure you're getting it right as you go so we don't have to fix anything later. All right, talk to you soon.